Fermat's last theorem is an extremely popular mathematical statement. Despite its very easy formulation, the proof of Fermat's last theorem made a lot of problems. It took mathematicians over 350 years to finally prove it. The theorem was formulated by Fermat himself somewhere between the years 1637 and 1643. Over 350 years no one was able to prove it. In the year 1994 they could finally write down a proof of Fermat's last theorem, which was a huge mathematical success. Let's take a look at Fermat's last theorem. Let n be a natural number larger than 2. Then there exist no positive integers x, y and z so that x to the power of n plus y to the power of n is equal to z to the power of n. That means for a natural number n larger 2, it is not possible to find positive natural numbers x, y and z, so that this equation here, x to the power of n plus y to the power of n is equal to z to the power of n holds true. As you can see, the statement itself isn't too difficult. Even a beginner in mathematics could understand it, but the proof made some problems. As I said before, it took over 350 years to finally prove that statement here. As you can see, that equation here only becomes unsolvable if the natural number n is larger than 2. If n is equal to 1 or 2, the equation x to the power of n plus y to the power of n is equal to z to the power of n has positive integer solutions x, y and z. Let's take a look at the cases n is equal to 1 and n is equal to 2. Ok, let's consider the case n is equal to 1. Then we get the equation x plus y is equal to z. And it is easy to see that there are positive natural numbers x, y and z that solve this equation here. For example, we could set x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2 and z is equal to 3. Then we have found a solution of this equation here, because 1 plus 2 is equal to 3. So the case n is equal to 1 isn't difficult at all. The case n is equal to 2 is more interesting. So we are looking for positive integers x, y and z that satisfy that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. Such natural numbers do exist and are called Pythagorean triple. An example of a solution of that equation here would be x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4 and z is equal to 5. Because x squared plus y squared is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared which is equal to 9 plus 16 which is equal to 25 which is equal to 5 squared and this is z squared. 
So x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4, and z is equal to 5 is a positive integer solution of that equation here. If you need more solutions of that equation here, you can use formulas to find them. So x is equal to a squared minus b squared, y is equal to 2 times a times b, and z is equal to a squared plus b squared. Now for each natural number a, b with a larger b, the numbers x, y and z are a solution of the equation x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. For example, for a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 1, we get that x is equal to 2 squared minus 1 squared, which is equal to 3. y is equal to 2 times 2 times 1, which is equal to 4, and z is equal to 2 squared plus 1 squared. which is equal to 5. We have already shown that x is equal to 3, y is equal to 4 and z is equal to 5 is a solution of the equation. We have shown this here at this point. For a is equal to 3 and b is equal to 2, we get that x is equal to 3 squared minus 2 squared, which is equal to 5. y is equal to 2 times 3 times 2, which is equal to 12. And z is equal to 3 squared plus 2 squared, which is equal to 13. Now we will check if x, y and z are really a solution of that equation here. So x squared plus y squared is equal to 5 squared plus 12 squared which is equal to 25 plus 144, which is equal to 169, which is equal to 13 squared, which is z squared. So these numbers x, y and z are really a positive integer solution of that equation here. So that was the case n is equal to 2. And as I said before, for n larger 2, that equation here has no solution anymore when considering positive natural numbers x, y and z. That is what Fermat's last theorem is telling us. Okay, I hope this video was helpful and you could learn some things about Fermat's last theorem. If you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.